maybe we come from a similar like punk rock background in some ways that you want a little bit of that like yeah. fire in what you do. As your drummer was talking about. <laughs> you know what he says every time we go on stage? What? Let's leave no ass unfucked. Hi, this is Katy Perry and you're watching <laughs> Noisy on Vice TV. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Justin Bieber. <laughs> I'm Justin Bieber, and you're watching Noisy on Vice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Meryl from Toon Yards, and you're watching Noisy. Hi, I'm Annie Clark from St. Vincent, and you're watching Noisy. Wow, that's so lame when it's really just us. <laughs> so thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Stravinsky is the jam. I mean, there's a reason they rioted over his music, right? Right. We reference that. Um, Stravinsky a lot, not, we reference Stravinsky a lot. No, but we, uh, <laughs> but just that moment of like making music that maybe the first audience of people is like, ugh, yeah. I hate this, yeah, you know? Totally. And not being afraid to do that because it still means that it's furthering music in general. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ugliness that I put intentionally in, in my voice or in my vocal takes in the mm -hmm. studio that I want to just keep there. And I think about that a lot, both with what we were talking about in terms of adding, you know, far out stuff into music that's that's essentially pop music. Yeah, pop music, totally. Yeah, ugliness is is confrontational in a way that it's really kind of satisfying. When, like you're saying, like once you get past the like, oh, this is sour. I don't like the taste of this. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I want a little shit, more. <laughs> I want more. Like there's something about it. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that just to like invite a little bit of that chaos in is really yeah. powerful. Totally. Touring. Touring. <clears throat> How are you feeling about it? Uh, honestly, it doesn't really suit me anymore. I think I, I lived out of a car from like 2002 to 2010. Wait a second, like you were on tour or like Jewel style? Uh, there was a Jewel style moment. I worked, <laughs> I worked on a farm. <laughs> And I moved out. I was living in the barn of the puppet theater where I worked. And I was like, I can't take it in the barn, man. And so I moved into my little Subaru wagon for a little while. When, I don't know what it's like for you, but I think I feel like every time someone asks, like, what's it like to be a woman in music? The only difference is probably that you get asked, what's it like to be a woman in music? <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. I just feel like it's 2012. Like, I think it's remarkable how often in 2011 people were like, Imagine that the, some of the best music this year was by women. Yeah, like that yeah, constantly that came up, lot. and I was like, like, "Why? Why are we talking about gender when men don't get asked? Like, what's it like to be a guy in rock and roll?" <laughs> yeah. like, um, and even asking it kind of sounds like, "Well, you poor thing, what's it like?" And it's like, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I play a little old time fiddle. Well, you play the fiddle. But you don't bust that out. Not, <laughs> not yet. I really, all my friends who know that I do that, they're like, where's the fiddle? <laughs> yeah. um, no, not yet. We'll see. Were you, and at that point, were you listening to punk rock already? I mean, yeah, I had a, um, my best friend's older brother, who's like a really cool skater dude. And he was really into <laughs> bad brains yeah. and like, you know, DC punk. And I remember he was the one who brought over Nirvana Nevermind. Yeah. The cool kid. The cool kid ahead they, of everybody. There were not that many cool kids in, you know, suburban Dallas. <laughs> yep, me. suburban Connecticut. <laughs> Being that you are doing an album with David Byrne, what? at least for me, that would be like, you know, having that, ex that like weird out of body experience. Oh, where, like, yes. So it's like yeah. these moments where, where you meet your heroes and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, they're just a person. You know, my philosophy, I guess, on it is that Okay, if I think about all the music that I've ever heard that I loved so dearly and that has given me so much, the fact that I get to give back to that canon is like the, the best thing. To think that maybe what you're doing is healing people feels like, oh, that's self-aggrandizing. Don't, you know, don't think too much of yourself or whatever, but I think I think it does because I know that what other people have done has mattered to me. And so I just have to trust that it's the same reciprocal sort of thing. Yeah. The idea that our music can heal people um, is 
just kind of the thing that kind of keeps me going. And that kids care. And it's not, you know, um, maybe just a passing thing, but that it really matters to them. And it's worked, it's weaved its way into their lives and been like a voice for something that, that they couldn't necessarily express yet.